2012 was the year in which Jaguar, that most famous of British automotive marks, celebrated reaching the 90th anniversary of its founding in 1922. Nowadays, the city of Coventry is the location most associated with the mark. But the story actually began in the seaside resort of Blackpool, which is why these cars were gathered outside Coombe Abbey, just south of Coventry. Forty Jaguars of all ages were getting ready to set off on a meandering route for a four-day drive across England to celebrate that special anniversary back at the company's birthplace. Coventry suffered badly during World War II, particularly its beautiful old medieval cathedral, which was almost totally ruined by the collateral damage of German bombing raids on the many engineering companies based in the city at that time. A new cathedral was built in the 1950s alongside the ruins of the old and still makes a powerful statement against the impact of war on a civilian population. Miraculously, some of the medieval buildings in the immediate neighbourhood of the cathedral did survive the bombing, including the City Hall and the St Mary's Guild Hall just behind it. So, dinner in the beautiful old banqueting room of the Guild Hall was a fitting place for the Jaguar Tour participants to gather before setting off the following day. A 1928 Austin 7 with a special two-seater body headed the Jaguar convoy as it rolled out of Coombe Abbey the next morning. At the wheel was its owner, John Gallen, who at 84 years old was exactly the same age as his car. And it was to cars like the little 7 that the Jaguar owners following in the convoy behind had to give thanks for the great models that came out of the Coventry factory over the years, various of which those owners were proudly driving on the tour. The company that was to become Jaguar Cars had begun life in 1922 as Swallow Sidecars, building motorcycle sidecars in a small workshop near the homes of its founders, William Lyons and William Walmsley. Within a short time, the company had prospered and expanded into providing special sporting bodies for small cars from manufacturers like Austin and Wolseley. It had also soon outgrown its Blackpool roots and moved to the Midlands, where most of the major motor manufacturers were based. William Walmsley had left the business by that stage, so it was up to William Lyons to choose the new location for the new factory. He chose a large brownfield site off Browns Lane, near the village of Owlsley, about six miles north of the city of Coventry. By the mid-1930s, Swallow were building complete cars, using engines and running gear from the Coventry-based Standard Motor Company. The handsome sporting saloons and two-seater sports cars adopted the new name of SS Jaguar at that time, as it was felt that this more aggressive name better suited the bigger and more powerful cars then coming off of the Browns Lane production line. After World War II, the SS initials were dropped, as they were unfortunately the same initials used to denote the most elite regiment in Nazi Germany's armed forces. In the late 1940s, SS Jaguar officially became known simply as Jaguar Cars, the brand that became a legend in its own lifetime.
The success of Jaguar Cars was eventually to bring William Lyons a knighthood, and he lived the lifestyle that he deserved. This is Wappenbury Hall, about 12 miles south of Coventry, and which was for many years the home of the Lyons family. About 60 miles east of Coventry is Old Warden Aerodrome in Bedfordshire. It's home to the Shuttleworth Collection that houses one of the finest collections of vintage aircraft in the world. The Old Warden Estate was the home of Richard Ormond Shuttleworth, a well-known racing motorist and aviator in the 1930s. Known as Mad Jack to his friends, Shuttleworth won the 1935 British Grand Prix at Donington Park, and members of the Vintage Sports Car Club still compete at that circuit today for the Shuttleworth Trophy. Shuttleworth was killed in a plane crash during World War II when he was 31 years old. Ironically, given his nickname, he died in a night-flying training accident rather than in combat. The collection was established in his memory by his family on the Old Warden estate and is one of the few places where enthusiasts can watch World War I aircraft flying from a grass field, just as they would have done in wartime northern France more than 90 years ago. It was a perfect stop for the Jaguar Tour and a fitting background for cars like John Gallon's Swallow 7 and other pre-war SS cars in the convoy. The University City of Cambridge was the first overnight stop for the tour and the exotic and eclectic collection of cars soon stopped the traffic in the city centre. Being pulled along the River Cam in a flat bottom punt is one of the joys of life in summertime Cambridge. And so it was for the participants on the tour. The stretch of the river that runs through Cambridge is known as the Backs, as it runs along the back of several of the city's best-known colleges. It was one of these colleges, St John's, that was the destination for an elegant evening. First there were drinks on the manicured lawns and then a traditional university-style dinner in the Great Hall, with the party entertained by the a cappella singing of members of the Gentlemen of St John's Choir. St John's is one of the oldest university colleges in the world, having been established in 1511 by Lady Margaret Beaufort, the mother of King Henry VII. Day two of the tour began with a trip across the flatlands of the Cambridgeshire Fens and on to the Royal Stud at Sandringham. Sandringham House sits on 20,000 acres of beautiful Norfolk countryside and was originally the home of King Edward VII. It was he who established the Royal Stud. As one might imagine, some of the finest horses in the racing world are housed and bred there, and the tour participants were privileged to see some of them close up including the magnificent stallion Motivator, a former derby winner that now earns millions a year in stud fees. Nice work, if you can get it. The tour group was able to visit parts of the stud never normally seen by the public, and one of the highlights was the chance to get up close and personal with a wonderfully placid mare and her obviously more energetic foal. The little one was in the final stages of recovery, but very obviously still anxious to get back outside and into one of the spacious Sandringham paddocks. A champion of the future, perhaps.
After continuing north across Finland to an overnight stop near Grantham, day three began with a drive across the rolling hills of the Lincolnshire Wolds to the Humber Estuary and its famous suspension bridge that is one of the longest spans in Europe. It links Lincolnshire with eastern Yorkshire and the Jaguar convoy crossed it on the way to another of the most famous stately homes in the world. Castle Howard is more of a palace than a country house, a magnificent 18th century building designed in the Baroque style by the famous architects Sir John Vanbrugh and Nicholas Hawksmoor. It was built for the third Earl of Carlisle and completed in 1711, and the Earl's family, the Howards, have now lived there for just over 300 years. Without doubt, it's one of the largest private residences in the world. The house sits at the heart of a 13,000-acre estate and is familiar to literally millions of TV viewers around the world as one of the main locations for the serialised film of Evelyn Waugh's most famous book, Brideshead Revisited. From Castle Howard it was on into the city of York and dinner in a unique location, right amongst the magnificent locomotives and carriages on display in the National Railway Museum. Just like the classic Jaguars on the tour, the steam engines on display represented some of the greatest achievements in the fields of British engineering and transportation. Day four and the tour headed from the Vale of York and up into the Yorkshire Dales. The Dales are officially designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty and the lunch stop at Aysgarth Falls certainly emphasised that fact. After lunch came a run over the Pennine Fells, across part of Lancashire and into Cumbria's famous Lake District, another area of outstanding natural beauty. Lake Windermere was the evening destination and the tour group got to enjoy the beauty of their surroundings with a twilight dinner cruise on the lake.
from the reminders of Britain's great engineering in the days of steam at the Railway Museum and the crews on a hundred-year-old steamer on Lake Windermere, the Jaguar party came very much back to the present on day five, back even to a glimpse of the future, in fact. They were welcomed to the facility of BAE Systems at Wharton in Lancashire, the massive manufacturing and assembly facility of the Typhoon aircraft. Although it was originally known as the Eurofighter, the Typhoon is much more than the description indicates. It can be used as a fighter, a light bomber or a ground attack aircraft and is therefore great value for money at $76 million each. The Jaguar group was allowed to line their cars up in arrowhead formation around the Typhoon with John Gallon's Little Swallow proudly on point. Fish and chips is now seen as the quintessential traditional English dish. In fact, fried food was essentially unknown in England until the 19th century, when textile workers from northern Spain came over to work in the mills of Lancashire and brought their traditional method of cooking seafood with them. In fact, there's a blue plaque on the wall of a chippy in Oldham that marks it as the first such fast food shop in England. So the Friday night fish supper was a most appropriate way to celebrate the tour group's final arrival at the famous Lancashire seaside town of Blackpool. Finally, after meandering gradually north but zigzagging from east to west across England, the Jaguar tour had reached the place where it all began. And for John Gallon's little swallow, it was truly a homecoming. Its plucky little Austin 7 and its equally plucky octogenarian driver had made all the way back to the car's birthplace, the town where it was actually built 84 years ago. It was one of the cars that provided the foundation for what became one of the best known and best loved marks in motoring, the legend in its own lifetime that is the Jaguar brand. <laughs> 